it's going to start out at position one, then it's going to go to position two, then it's going to go to position three. After that, Connor, what position does it go to? I'll go back to two. And then? Uh, one. Good, and then? Two. Yep. Three. Good. Then one. And then two, sorry, my bad. Two and then one. Keep going. And then two. Good. And then three. Yep. And then two. Three, an excellent job. And then one. Good. Keep going. No, that's, that's fine, go ahead. All right, two. Good. And three. Yeah. And two. Yeah. And two. Good. And two. Good. And three. Yeah. And two. Good job. And one. Doing an excellent job. And two. Good. And three. Good. And two. That, that's, you're doing excellent. How much farther? I don't know how much. When does it end? It will never end. It will never end. Okay. Notice because this is a frictionless environment, it will just keep on doing this forever. So clearly this is a good time to stop. So this thing is called simple harmonic motion. S-H-M. Simple harmonic motion. When it moves back and forth like what you're looking right at right here. Bless you. So this horizontal mass spring system is in simple harmonic motion. And we should actually be able to identify all sorts of stuff about the magnitude of the force exerted by the spring, the acceleration of the mass, and the velocity of the mass. We've already identified the force of the spring is zero here. Therefore, what do we know about the magnitude of the force of the spring at both positions one and three? Notice this is magnitude only. We're not talking about the direction, but rather just the magnitude. I need more people to drive the bus. I got, I've got to go. Good. Meredith. They will be equal. They will be equal in magnitude. True. The forces at one and three will be equal in magnitude. We know one other thing about it. Come. Uh, when you add them together, it will be equal in magnitude too. Uh, actually, that's not correct. Um, when you talk about the magnitude only, if you were to add the force of the spring, uh, without the magnitude, yes, they will, the, the two will cancel out, you get the force of spring at zero, true. But I'm talking about just the magnitudes at one and three. We know something about what, how they vary. What is true about the force of the spring at one and three compared to the rest of the forces? Will it ever be greater than the force at one and three? No. So what do we know about the force of the spring at 1 and 3? It's the maximum. So notice the magnitude of the force of the spring is at a maximum at 1 and 3. Now, because we know the force of the spring, we should be able to figure out what we know about the acceleration of the mass in this mass spring system. Who could tell me what we know about the acceleration of this mass at either 1, 2, or 3? I need other bus drivers. Something we know about the acceleration at either one, two, or three, the magnitude of the acceleration. Some of you like to ride the bus. We have some that like to drive. Everyone needs to drive. Mario? Where? It is zero at one of those two positions, but which one is the acceleration of the mass spring system equal to zero at? It's actually not zero at one and three. Sam? It is zero at two. So the acceleration at position two is equal to zero. Why? How is it that we know that the acceleration at position two is equal to zero? Go ahead, Sam. I agree with that, but I need a little bit more. True, because it's at the equilibrium position, but wait, I need a little bit more on that. Josh? The force is zero. Therefore, remember Newton's second law. The sum of the forces equals mass times the acceleration. 
The only force acting in the x direction is the force of the spring. Therefore, if the force of the spring is equal to zero, that means that the acceleration is equal to zero. What then do we know about the acceleration at positions one and three, Ms. Hong? True, but we know more about them than that. The magnitude of the acceleration at one and three. Connor, help her out. At one, will it be negative? Uh, at one, it will be negative, but we're talking about just the magnitude again, so I'm not concerned about whether it's negative or positive. Negative or positive. Very cool. True, I agree with that, but there's more. We know they're not only equal Krauss, we also know they're the maximum. They're the maximum. maximum. How do we know that? Because the force is the maximum. Because again, just like we knew that the acceleration was zero, because the force is a maximum, the acceleration must be a maximum because of Newton's second law. We also know stuff about the velocities at one, two, and three. Who can tell me something we know about the velocities at the velocity at either one, two, or three? Any? It's going to be zero at one and three. Why is the velocity equal to zero at one and three? Because it's changing the direction. Same reason, for the same reason that the, uh, the velocity at the very top for the Clementine, thank you, I was like lost the word for it there. Because the, excel the velocity for the Clementine at the very top is zero because it's changing directions, it's the same thing at one and three, it's changing directions, and therefore the velocity must be zero at that particular point. Then what do we know about the velocity at position two, Christina? It's a maximum. So we have all sorts of useful information about the velocity, the acceleration, and the force at positions one, two, and three. One other quick question about this simple harmonic motion has to do with this. UAM. UAM stands for, Daniela, what? Uniformly accelerated motion, class. Is simple harmonic motion also uniformly accelerated motion? Yes. yes. Well, I know. Sometimes. Yes. All right. Uniformly accelerated motion means the acceleration is constant. Is the acceleration constant in simple harmonic motion? No. No. The acceleration is a maximum. It's zero. It's a maximum. It's zero. It's a maximum. Please realize simple harmonic motion is not uniformly accelerated motion. And therefore, you cannot use those equations when you are using simple harmonic motion. Can you please stop that? <coughs> uh, it's okay. It's just I'm really distracted by it. Okay. So, simple harmonic motion. In order to have simple harmonic motion, you need something called a restoring force. A restoring force has two specific qualities. One, it is always toward the equilibrium position. And as Nick pointed out, notice that the force of the spring is always toward the equilibrium position in this particular case. The second thing about a restoring force is that it needs to be proportional to the distance from the equilibrium position. And if you look, because the force of spring is equal to negative kx, the larger the x, the larger the force of the spring, that makes the force of the spring both to always toward the equilibrium position and proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. Therefore, for a mass spring system in simple harmonic motion, it is the force of the spring which is the restorative force.